Hey everyone, it's Alchemist. missed it. I can hear thunder in the distance again. I can hear it in the distance again. This is not good. It's, it's raining constantly. So I just finished watching, just finished watching the Ubisoft press conference. And so my first, the, the first big shock was no Aisha Tyler. Uh, Aisha Tyler has been hosting the press conference for years now, and she's gone. There's no no trace of her, um, which isn't isn't necessarily a good thing. Uh, I thought she did a pretty good job with what she had. Nobody could have made the previous press conference like whoever came up with the gimmicks for those press conferences, like the memes of the last conference, and like and so forth and so forth going back. No one could have made those work. So. I, I, she, she's just, she's out, she's out, and, okay, I, I just don't want to, when, when I talk about what I'm about to talk about, I just don't want it to be interpreted that I'm slagging off Aisha Tyler, because, uh, n nobody could, could have made that shit work, but she's gone, <clears throat> she's gone, and, the most stunning thing to me about this press conference was that they just cut the bullshit. Like uh, Ubisoft press conferences for the past few years have been some have have been some bizarre kind of performance theater, and this time they just none of that. They're just going to have the developers walk out there, introduce their games, and talk about them, and they're not going to have any kind of skit. They're not going to have Brentel floss or whatever, you know, do anything. I think, who was it? I don't know. They, they just, they just, they just, they just had the show. Just, we're just gonna have the show. We're gonna let the game speak for themselves. That was very refreshing. So this this uh, press conference wasn't nearly as painful or as boring as the last few years. That said, you open with Mario Rabbids Kingdom battle, and I was watching Gamespot. And uh, the the fondest wish of uh, some of the uh, GameSpot personalities who are going to be watching this E3, I was watching them before the press conference because, of course, I want to watch the press conference without someone commentating over it. And uh, the fondest wish for some of them was that the whole Mario Rabbids thing was just a fever dream that wouldn't come true. Unfortunately, it came true pretty much immediately. Basically, what what I gathered was it's like a Mario, it's a team based Mario themed Rabbids shooter. It looks really weird. They had Shigeru Miyamoto come out uh, with like a Mega Buster. He he had like a Mario themed Mega Buster, and he brought one for um, I I can't remember his name. The, the CEO of of Ubisoft, and they. Uh, and they waved them around, they posed, they they really sort of awkwardly, super awkwardly bantered. Um, at first it was kind of, at first it was kind of adorable. You got like a Japanese man and a Frenchman just sort of like pose, goofing around and having fun, but it just sort of like started going on and on. It just became like really awkward and just like, let's go, <laughs> let's, whatever we're doing, let's do it. Um, but yeah, Mario themed. If you are a fan of Rabbids, if you don't remember Rayman, who I'm sure remembers you, I'm sure Rayman remembers you. I'm sure there's a copy of Rayman 2 you could be playing right now. Somewhere in the world that you could adopt and give a home. And it'll... If you can't... But if you can't remember Rayman and you are infatuated with the rabbits give it a shot sure it's for the nintendo switch and then they went to assassin's creed origins and this 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 presentation boggled my mind so we didn't learn anything about this game that we didn't already know from the microsoft press conference and that's because it was largely consisted of a cinematic sizzle trailer uh, where nothing really happens. 
Like, like nothing is revealed. It's basically just like a, a trailer of like various locales in the game. Uh, no dialogue, just sort of, ju just sort of this song playing over the background. And so all the stuff that I could tell you about this game would come from the Microsoft press conference because it revealed almost nothing. I could I can say it's an open world. It's a screed game. I can say that it's a, um, there's, uh, wildlife in this game. Uh, it looks like the wildlife behaves similar to that in Far Cry. You can have, uh, antagonistic wildlife come after you. Uh, bird drones. Your bird is a drone, like in Wildlands, like in Ghost Recon, like in frickin' Watch Dogs. Ridiculous. You... They did the thing that struck me. The reason why it boggled my mind is because they didn't bother with a live demonstration of the game in their own press conference. They what they did, and I can't believe they pulled this stunt. What they did was they cut to a room where they were gonna have a post press conference demo of the game, and they had a, like a like a hand cam focus on a monitor on a table. Like a, like a like a TV an LCD monitor on a table while somebody was playing the game. They didn't pipe the gameplay feed through at all to the people attending in the room. They just here's a monitor with the game running on it, like being played through it. It's really dark and washed out because we're filming it in a bright room with a hand cam that's not really picking up the picture very well from it. And all we really have is the assurances of the two people sitting next to the guy playing it that, oh, it looks incredible, trust us. That was it. That was it. They only showed the actual demo of the actual game after the actual conference. And I'm not going to go chase down that footage. I'm sorry. You had a shot to impress me during your press conference. And you pissed it away for reasons I, you, 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 you threw away. You threw away my... You killed any enthusiasm I might even have had for this game right off the bat. Because it makes it look like there is something you don't want people to see. If you're, if you're hiding your game like that. Instead of showing it off. And that only makes me wonder about the long history of ridiculous glitches that Assassin's Creed has has uh, piled has accumulated. Like, like it's it's kind of picked, Assassin's Creed has kind of gotten a reputation now for launching with really weird, horrible looking like glitches, like the melty faces in Unity will live in for. Those will live forever. <clears throat> so it only makes me, it only makes me feel like something is not done, and you're not willing to risk showing it on a show floor. Uh, what we saw during the Microsoft press conference looked scripted as hell. There was a point where the the player, what or the player character was trying to sneak over a wall into this fortress and there was a guard staring straight at him in his direction and he did not react. This guard wasn't far away either. He couldn't have been... He was at most 30 to 40 feet away in broad daylight staring straight at you. And he did not react. So that demo looked heavily scripted to me. Because there's no way... There's no way... There, there wasn't any inclement weather. There wasn't any sandstorm or anything like that. If, you, if you're thinking of like weather, weather effects and Metal Gear Solid or what have you. No, it was a perfectly clear day. He could not see you from that far away. So he was just scripted not to do anything is what I think. So I don't think this game is done to the point where they are confident showing it. And if you're not that confident in your game at the point in development it is, why did you show it off to begin with? You, you really should, like, just show this a CG trailer if you're so, if you lack so much confidence in your game. You'll still get flack for only so, showing a CG trailer, but at least then it won't look like you're 
you have to announce the game, but you're terrified <laughs> of, like, the state that the game is in right now. So going from Assassin's Creed Origins, we went to The Crew 2. Uh, I, I will read my notes regarding The Crew 2 to you right now. Not iconic. That's not what iconic means. Get fucked, Ubisoft. I hate, I hate that they have butchered this word. I hate that they keep trying to say this word. Like, they're trying to force it into your brain. That their games are iconic when they're they're not. Their games are gray sludge. Uh, the only reason I in, I think the only reason I find Wildlands enjoyable is because I haven't been along for that ride on with Ubisoft games, like other, like people who play Ubisoft games have. I haven't been along for that ride where everything has slowly evolved into the same gray sludge, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, but the crew too. Uh, looks like it covers various motorsports. Uh, there were speedboats. There were um, plane racing. There was plane racing. There was off-roading. There was, of course, driving. Uh, there was, of course, like muscle cars and such. All I really have to say about the Crew 2 is watching the speedboat segment made me want to play Hydro Thunder. And, like, I've, it makes me want, feel like going to play Hydro Thunder in a wave race again. That's the most I could say for it. I didn't play the crew one, so. Uh, South Park, the Fractured But Whole trailer was released. October 17th was the release date they gave. Uh, Transference was a VR title. It was the next thing they did uh, that had any... It was the next, like, real announcement that they did. It's a VR horror game. Uh, something about uh, download, like exploring the conscience of a human who has been downloaded, the consciousness of a human that has been copied and recorded onto a computer. Like you're literally like exploring their mind, essentially. So it, it had it, it very keenly reminded me of Soma. Uh, it seems to have a lot of FMV elements as well. Which, FMV gets a lot of flack, but you, if you do FMV well, when FMV is done really well, it's usually real, real good. Uh, if you want to know how to do FMV really well, look at Command and Conquer, look at Wing Commander. If you want to see examples of that being done, of FMV being done super, super well. Um... So the next one was also a new IP. It was called Skull and Bones, and this one looked real interesting to me. So I'm not sure, but it, it was kind of described as a persistent pirate sim, kind of like a persistent world pirate sim. Uh, and I do mean sim, like learning to use, like you have to really learn how to use your ship. You have different ship types specializing in different tactics. You have ships that are good at ramming other ships. You have, um, like, tanky ships like frigates. You have ships that are good, like, up close for broadsides. Um, they showed a CG trailer, then they showed a bunch, like, a 5v5 team-based um, PvP called, like, Loot Hunt, where you basically have to uh, gather the most doubloons. Like, you have to gather the most gold, and whichever team has the most gold at the end of the round wins. And at the end of a round, these pirate hunters show up, who are basically the Concord Corporation from EVE. You cannot kill them. Their ships and their armament are too good. They're too strong. And what ends up happening is one guy sort of stays behind so that the frigate carrying the most gold can escape and win the round. And th this one guy sort of like stays behind and sacrifices his ship to uh, stop the to like stem the tide so the other guy can get away. Um, the way it was described, it was actually described a lot like Eve, where uh, they talked about how the average lifespan of a pirate in the golden age of piracy was about like 180 days or something along those lines. So there is going to be a lot, of, uh, a big necessity. There's going to be a lot of necessity to to how to form alliances. Like uh, you're going to need to form alliances. You're going to need to break alliances. You're going to need to know when to like stab your alliance members in the back very much like eve online I think e kind of kind of like eve online but far less open and on and in sort of like the golden age of piracy um the uh demo the 
5v5 PvP they showed was in the Indian Ocean. But I can only imagine that we're going to be also seeing the Caribbean, because there's a, like the Seven Seas and what have you. Uh, but yeah, you have to like know how to use the wind, you have to know how like, to you to, you can build and customize your ships. Uh, you can board and capture ships, it looked like. Uh, it reminded me a lot on the whole of Pirate's Gold. If you ever uh, had a Genesis and you played uh, Pirate's Gold, it reminded me a lot of that game. It looked real interesting. It's definitely something to keep your eye on. And we went immediately from that to Just Dance. And I will once again read my notes to you. Uh, automaton music number out of nowhere. Sub-Zero style dancers. Bubble Pop, what the hell is happening? Oh, it's Just Dance, bathroom break time. It's out in October. Yeah. <laughs> it's Just Dance. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. If you're a fan of Just Dance, it's going to be out in like 2018. The 2018 edition is going to be out in October for all the consoles. If you're a fan of Just Dance, there you go. Uh, there's a get new mobile game, South Park Phone Destroyer. I didn't really know what to make of that one. It looks, it looks kind of like a... I don't know. I don't know what the hell that was, or what the hell it was about. They didn't really explain what that game was or how it worked. They just sort of, like, put a trailer for it up, and that was it. And the trailer didn't even do a really good job of explaining what the hell that game was. Uh, immediately after that, you have Starlink Battle for Atlas, which looks like an open system, as in, like, an open star system, Space Fighter Sim. Uh... They were showing some kind of controller-mounted peripheral. It gets mounted onto the, um, like it was mounted onto the touchpad of the PlayStation 4, uh, PlayStation 4 controller. And, uh, you, like, swap characters. Like, there's, like, little figuring, little figurines and little fighter craft that you, like, swap onto this. If you've seen, like, the little Star Wars toys that you, like, put in your finger, it's kind of like that. Um, like, there's a, there's a little mount that you put on your finger, and, like, the little, like, toy goes on top of it. It's kind of like that, but on your controller. And you can, like, swap out character, like, these little character figures, and you can swap out, like, the fighter craft, these, these toy fighter craft, and they have, like, modules on the sides of them that I assume are weapons, and you, like, just sort of, like, swap those out... And, like, stick it on your controller. It looked real weird. It looked interesting, but it looked real weird. It basically looked like an amiibo sort of deal going on with that. So I can't wait to see how much they, uh, how the exorbitant prices they charge, considering this is Ubisoft or, like, different fighter craft and what have you. This is the, uh, this is a company that charges, that has microtransaction stores for full price, like, $60 games. So, I don't... I don't know about this game. This game looks like it's gonna... It's gonna have a lot of money that it's gonna try and squeeze out of you. And if you're into space fighter sims, to be honest, there are better ones out there. Elite Dangerous. Uh... Final thoughts on Starlink Battle for Atlas? Not beyond Good and Evil 2. Uh, there was Steep, which is kind of a snowboard sports game. My notes on that are sports horror title. Fuck me, that's high. And nope, 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 nope. The nope is strong with this game. I ain't playing it. But they did announce uh, some new content for it. I can still hear the thunder. Far Cry 5 uh, was announced. Not, well, it was already announced, but it was shown a little bit of it. Some gameplay next. Uh, the villain, it's open with like this shot of like a church. Of, like this session at a church. Of course, everybody's armed with AR-15s. Uh, the villain at the, the villain leading whatever the hell was going on 
looked like a white trash CM Punk. And uh, then the one of the uh, devs came out and said, people are fucking scared. So it seems to be team-based gameplay. There are, like, n a number of characters you, you can bring along to help you out, like Guns for Hire and such. You're, you're basically... You've basically been hired to pacify this area. Like, like this town has been taken over by what look like white supremacists, maybe? Kind of, like, kind of like, um, like hillbilly version, like a hillbilly version of, like, the, the assholes from Columbia and Bioshock Infinite. You know, this is just like this. Like, like if you took... If you have seen any gameplay of Outlast 2, those people have taken over a town. And you have been hired to raise some hell, as they put it, and clear them out. Like, you've been hired to, to liberate this town. Um, so team-based gameplay, Guns for Hire, there was a dog, he looked like he acted very closely like dog meat from Fallout 4. The, uh, the, the biggest impression this left on me is it looks a lot like a mod for Wildlands. The interface looks like Wildlands, the environment looks like Wildlands, the, um... The marking of targets looks like Wildlands. It even uses the same cursor as it looked like as Wildlands. It looked like a mod that you could download for Wildlands. Like somebody had like modded a new campaign for it. So, not terribly excited for Far Cry 5. To be honest, I haven't played a Far Cry since 2. Far Cry 2 was the last one I played. So... And even then, I mostly spent Far Cry 2 setting it Africa on fire. Because that's what happens when you give me a flamethrower. I use it. Anyways. It, just, it might be worth keeping a, keeping a look open, keeping an eye open at, but I got Wildlands. I already got this with Wildlands, and uh, that's what this game looks like. It looks like a mod for Wildlands. Right down to the engine it's running on. Um... It, the engine it's running on looks like the same one running Wildlands. So, I, I already I feel like I already have this game. And I'm enjoying Wildlands, but I am, again, like I said earlier, I'm enjoying Wildlands because I have not played so many Ubisoft games that I have played them all, if that makes any sense. Like, Ubisoft games have become sort of infamous for having congealed into like gray goop where like all of them are the same sort of open world map with ton with like like tons of trinkets and collectibles and stuff and radio towers and what have you to like hunt down to like open parts of the map or hunt down little like tchotchkes like um equipment or lore or what have you like all like Ubisoft games have kind of become very bland and sort of look, have congealed together into one gelatinous mass of Ubisoft type design, like of Ubisoft open world type game. And I think one of the reasons I enjoy Wildlands so much is I haven't played those games, so Wildlands is a fun diversion for me. Like, I don't feel like I've done this a million times before with Wildlands. I'm sure by the time I complete Wildlands, I will feel that way, that I have done this a million times before. Uh, that is why I, t I am taking my time with Wildlands and not playing it all in one sitting. Because I would probably lose my goddamn mind if I did. But, like I said, from what I saw of Far Cry 5... It feels like I've played this game. It feels like I already own this game. So I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna opt out of this game right now. It might turn out to be real good. I heard, but I heard Far Cry 3 turned out to be real good as well. I'm just gonna stand back here. Um, 
And then finally, really surprise announcement, uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Beyond Good and Evil 2 was actually announced. It's a prequel. It is a prequel. You remember, you remember that, that that scene they showed at, e, at an E3 like ages past, like ages like ago with like Jade and Paige sort of like stuck in a desert and Paige's hand is all like messed up? I think his name is Paige. I think his name was Paige. Like the pig guy. Uh, his hand was all messed up and people were like, oh, he's like, he's like got the corruption on him or something. Um, like I, re I remember seeing that. At a, at a Ubisoft press conference at an E3 years ago. This has nothing to do with that. This is a prequel. This is before Jade was even born. Uh, there's this re resistance leader who's, like, commanding a starship. Apparently, you'll be able to take this starship to various places. It had a huge Fifth Element vibe. Like, it felt like well, I was watching a scene out of Fifth Element. Um... Right down to the language. But yeah, it's a prequel. It has largely nothing to do, it felt, with the, um, the first one. Uh, Shed your bitch tears, Michael Ansel. <laughs> something else. Like, he, com he comes on stage and he is crying. He is like, he's got, he's, he's super emotional. And uh, I couldn't blame him. Like, they asked him, like, how long it's been since the first game ship while he was on stage, and he went 15 years. And he he was clearly, like, super emotional, like, super just overcome to be there. So, I, yeah, I have to, I have to give that to him. Like, you got, you got greenlit after 15 years, bro, after 15 years of, like, fighting, and I can't help but wonder if Shenmue had anything to do with this. Like, they saw, like, that one E3 a couple of years ago where all the dreams came true. They announced the Final Fantasy VII re like The Sony press conference announced the Final Fantasy VII remake. They announced Last Guardian. Uh, they announced Shenmue. And I can't help but feel... Shenmue, which got, like, funded immediately. It's, it was funded the next day. Like it, like that, like Shenmue, you're like you're kidding. It gets funded overnight, but like after that, it kind of. I I have to wonder if that had anything to do with Ubisoft deciding to actually like just give Michael Ansel a Beyond Good and Evil two sequel, like just give to just give it to him. I wonder if seeing that swayed some opinions in, in uh, Ubisoft's corporate headquarters. So, he got, he got his sequel, and he was... He, he was just as happy as you can imagine. He, he was, like, crying open... He was weeping openly, like, thanking everyone for, like, sticking, sticking with him and uh, constantly clamoring for a sequel to be on Good and Evil 2. And you got a prequel... And then you got a prequel. And then you got a prequel. Is this really the only thing that I can keep saying? And then you got a prequel. It's kind of tragic, because that's the thing that no, like, that's the thing that nobody wanted. They wanted, they wanted to, to continue the story with, like, the characters that they had already come, that they had already formed a connection with all those years ago. That's... They had formed such a connection with these characters all those years ago that they had been fighting until today, 15 years later, to see a new game. And and then you got a prequel. And then you got a prequel. <laughs> That's really all I can say. It's like, and then you got a prequel. And then you got... I, like, I hope... If you were a fan of Beyond Good and Evil 2... I hope you get. I hope this prequel it turns out to be everything you wanted, and I hope this prequel turns out to be fantastic. And I hope you guys don't get Mega Man Legends three. <laughs> this is what I really hope. I hope Ubisoft doesn't pull a make, like pull a Capcom and just take the franchise out back and shoot it like Capcom did with Mega Man in general. Yeah. I, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope I hope you guys get your prequel, and I hope your prequel is fan. 
fantastic. But overall, that was a, that was a solid press conference. I am genuinely surprised at how solid that conference was. Uh, Sony is in a little over three hours, so I'm going to render this and upload it, and I will see you for the uh, postmodern of Sony's conference, because uh, Sony has been knocking it out of the park for the past few years, and I, I'm wondering if they can keep that up. I mean, uh, Ubisoft just actually put on an actually good press conference. Like, are we in Bizarro World? Like, Microsoft and uh, Bethesda were... Bethes Bethesda, if you were a fan of, like, Wolfenstein or, like, uh, Evil Within or Dishonored, if you were already a fan of those and you already invested in those franchises, that was your press conference. That was for you. If you're a fan of, like, Elder Scrolls or Fallout or Doom... You didn't get much out of that conference. Or if you were looking for something new, if you're looking for a new IP that they like one of the new IPs they've been talking about, that they've been teasing, you got nothing out of that press conference. And that was for Microsoft. Again, they gave they gave their big spotlight. They're, they they marketed a console without any kind of killer app to sell the console with. So yeah, like the like the the highest note. The highest notes they had were Metro, Crackdown, and Anthem. And only one of those was exclusive. So... Yeah! Not good. Not a good sign. But uh, Ubisoft put on a really good press conference just now. I'm wondering if we are in Bizarro World. We might be. I say a really good press conference. I and what I what I mean by that is I mean in comparison to the press conferences they put on years past. This press conference was not offensively bad. There was no Mr. Caffeine like there was like years back. There was no weird meme gimmick. There was no it wasn't painful to watch. It wasn't soul-crushingly boring like it was, like, last year. So... Maybe we're in Bizarro World and Sony's press conference will suck. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Nothing... Up is down and nothing makes sense. But, uh, I will be... I will... Be back for the post-mortem on that press conference. Let's see if Sony can... Let's see let's see if Sony can show up Microsoft and Bethesda as this circle as the um game industry circle jerk draws to a close before the Nintendo press conference tomorrow. Let's see if they if they can put on a better show. It wouldn't be difficult. Let, let let's see how they do. I'll see you then.